Hi, my name is Ken Sieberger. And I'm Rebecca Daly. And this is Youth in Government's Daily News Digest. For our first story tonight, we go to the Department of Finance. Part of the Department of Finance is the governor's budget. Two groups compete to have Lena Gavinis, the governor, sign off on their budget. On Thursday night, the Department of Finance hosted a debate amongst the youth governor candidates. The purpose of this debate is to specifically address the candidates' economic goals and fiscal platforms. So by having the governors come speak to us um, really adds to the experience of the Department of Finance because we base our budgets off of the platform of the governor and their economic policies. So by understanding the economic policies that the governors will be having next year, the potential future ones, then we can base our budget around that for next year. And if you do Department of Finance next year, then you, you'll know who you want to elect based on their platform and based on what you want to do in Department of Finance the following year. It's nice to see a cohesive, full understanding of how the budget actually impacts the economy, not uh, the whole state, not just a short-term this year type of view, but in a whole through long-term impact on the state and how it's going to affect education and social services. Inspiring and innovative thinking are two qualities a candidate must possess. However, in this debate, money is all that matters. I'm Jesse Zan for Y Witness News. Considering how many delegates run statewide each year, understanding how the money they spend affects their campaign is crucial. We examined the effects of imposed budgets on the youth governor campaigns. Good morning and welcome to day two in Sacramento. I'm sure many of you were wondering why 68th youth governor candidate Julia Kahn was absent from joint session this morning. Our news team got an inside look at this story in an interview with Julia herself explaining the situation and her thoughts on how this situation will impact the rest of her campaign. So there was unfortunately a technicality with my financial disclosure form and because of that I was unable to speak at opening joint session. And I'm still very much in this race, I'm still running, I'm still giving it my best, but unfortunately I was not able to speak at the Meet the Candidate session. We interviewed Jake Honeywell to see what he could tell us about the Julia Kahn story. Unfortunately, due to policy, there's not much you can elaborate on. Our resolution um, in terms of Julia Kahn's campaign was we did not invite her to speak at the Meet the Candidate session today at joint convention. That was the whole of the resolution and that is the whole of what I can say about the topic. I was under the impression that whatever we didn't spend before Fresno we could spend in Sacramento and I spent more than I was allotted by about eight dollars. How do you think this will impact the rest of your campaign? Well, um, at from 1 to 1.30 today in Convention Center Exhibit Hall E, we will be having a rally where I will give my speech. This is a setback. It's not a death sentence. I can still push my platform. I have ideas that I believe in. I have ideas to better this program. I'm still going to continue pushing it. Obviously, it was incredibly detrimental that I wasn't able to speak at joint session. That being said, I'm still going to give it my all, and it's a setback. It's not a death sentence. I'm very grateful that I'm still in this race, that I can continue to work as hard as I possibly can and run a grassroots campaign. The verdict is reached in a criminal court and is challenged as unfair. It is then taken to an appellate court. There, appellates challenge the verdict. Respondents defend it and justices make the final decision. Here, we talk to certain delegates about which roles they chose and why. Hi, I'm Maya Dunn with the Wazzles. We're headed over to the Masonic Temple to interview delegates of the appellate court on their thoughts and feelings on the program area, the case that they're working on, and recommendations for future delegates. While at the Masonic Temple, we observed the delegates as they worked hard on their cases. We asked a select few delegates to take some time to tell us why they chose their positions. I chose the respondent position because I firmly believe in state policies and in court decisions that defend the capital pun that defend capital decisions and finalize sentences. Um, I'm actually a respondent right now, and I um, actually really like it because. It's basically you're a prosecutor, and um, my dad's actually a prosecutor, and I want to follow in his footsteps. Antonio Zanelli, SPPY. Why did you choose justice rather than respondent? I chose justice rather than to be respondent because I want to see a uh, difference between what I, people think about the death penalty and uh, DNA swab in our court case we have. As some of you may know, there is a rivalry between the hotels of the Hyatt and the Sheraton. Now we bring you opinions on which one is the best. When you're not running around making legislature, the best place to spend your downtime is in your hotel room. You can sleep, you can eat, you can hang out with your friends. And most delegates are staying in either the Hyatt or the Sheraton. But there's a lot of debate as to which hotel is better. We went to both hotels and asked delegates about their opinions. 
Um, definitely the room service. Every time I come here every year, it's been ph uh, phenomenal. I really like just the ambiance of it. I think it has a lot of history. Um, the building is really, it's just a cool building, really nice design. Uh, my favorite part is we have a balcony. We can't really go out on it or open the door, but it has a good view, so that's kind of cool. I think the rivalry is like interesting, but at the same time, have staying like in both. They're both like really nice hotels, so it's not really like you have much of an advantage in either one. It's obvious that both hotels have their strong suits, and we may never have a definite answer as to which is better, but one thing is clear. No matter where you stay, Sacramento is a great experience. Now for the last story of the night. Who has the most free time? Is it bench trial, senate, media, or something else? There's been much talk throughout youth and government about the trial courts. Stereotypically, the trial courts are viewed as the snoozer by those outside the program area. We did some investigating to find out what the trial court delegates think of the program. I would actually not describe the bench court as boring. It's a lot of work, but it's interesting, and you just have to keep going. I do enjoy bench trial. Um, there, are, there are times where I can lose interest, but um, yeah, I think it's a great program. Um, I definitely enjoy jury trial. It's one of the most intense programs in all of youth and government. Um, jury trial is definitely not boring. It's one of the most fun programs I've been in since I've been in youth and government. The trial court program is a unique experience for each delegate, so calling the program boring just isn't fair. There are many delegates who are passionate about the trial court. This is all we have for today. I'm Sean Boomer from District 12. Stay classy. For more Ethan Government news, follow the YNG News social medias. And make sure to use the hashtag SAC2015.